I'm Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. Kupas deploys air power to counter ECOWAS intervention. Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso have dispatched warplanes to Niamey, Niger in a show of solidarity against possible military intervention by the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. A TV news report aired on Niger's state television highlighted joint efforts by Mali and Burkina Faso in support of Niger and the deployment of warplanes within Niger's borders on Friday. During a meeting on Friday of the ECOWAS chief of staff in Ghana, the date of the impending military intervention in Niger was not disclosed but the bloc declared that its military forces were ready to intervene as soon as orders were given. Burkina Faso and Mali, both under military leadership, previously released a statement of support for Niger against the planned ECOWAS military operation to alter the course of the coup in Niger. It warned that any intervention would be seen as a declaration of war against Burkina Faso and Mali. Mali deployed a pair of EMB-314 Super Tucano, a Bayraktar TB-2, and an Mi-35M, Hind E, attack helicopter. Mali ordered six EMB-314 Super Tucano in 2018. In 2021, Russia delivered an Mi-35M attack helicopter to Mali bringing the total number of the type in Mali to 11. In 2016, Rossoboron Export signed a contract with Mali for four Mi-35M helicopters, with two delivered in September 2017, a third was delivered in 2018. Mali previously acquired at least seven Mi-24D helicopters second-hand from Bulgaria between 2007 to 2012. Burkina Faso deployed a single EMB-314 Super Tucano and a single Bayraktar TB-2. Five Bayraktar TB-2 drones were delivered to the military of Burkina Faso between April and May 2022. Niger also deployed a pair of Turkish-built Hukas C light attack aircraft. Niger is the first foreign customer of the Hukas trainer aircraft, produced by Turkish Aerospace Industries. The Hercus C is an armed variant that can be used for close air support missions. It is fitted with a forward-looking infrared sensor and has a maximum weapons load of 3,300 pounds. It's able to take off and land on unprepared runways. The main advantage of the Hercus C is that it reduces the cost of air power, particularly in low-intensity conflict theaters where anti-air warfare threats are negligible. Russia has warned that military intervention in Niger by the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS, would lead to a protracted confrontation and destabilize the wider Sahel region. The Russian Foreign Ministry said that such an intervention would be a grave mistake and would only serve to prolong the crisis in Niger. Also, the United States has also threatened the Niger junta that it may be pushed to intervene militarily if the country's military rulers do not return to constitutional order. It is expected that additional weapons will be introduced to the theater to protect the Nigerian junta. On March 18, 2023, new Bayraktar TB2 UCAV delivery to Mali. Bamako Embassy in Republic of Turkey announced that the delivery ceremony was held for Bayraktar TB2 UCAVs which were exported to Mali. In the image shared by the embassy, it is seen that Mali Air Force has received L-39 Albatross jet engine trainer, light attack aircraft as well as Bayraktar TB2. Bayraktar TB2 UCAV was previously delivered to Mali. The delivered UCAVs were photographed during the visit of Defence Minister Colonel Sadio Kamara to Mopti Air Base in Mali on Wednesday, December 21, 2022. Expanding its Air Force inventory, Mali received five L-39 Albatross trainer, jet aircraft, two mil Mi-8 utility helicopters and Su-25 attack aircraft in January 2023. On August 26, 2023, ECOWAS plans military intervention to restore ousted Niger President Bazoum. In a bid to reinstate the democratically elected President of the Republic of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS, Commission has announced its intention to employ military force if diplomatic measures fall short. 
President of the Commission, Dr. Omar Touré, conveyed this decision during a recent media briefing, aiming to clarify ECOWAS' stance on the ongoing crisis in Niger. President Touré voiced concern about the resurgence of military intervention in African politics and stressed the importance of curbing this trend. He assured the people of Niger that ECOWAS is committed to their welfare and is actively striving to restore civilian governance and political stability in the nation. The current situation in Niger, characterized by the ousting of President Mohamed Bazoum by a military junta, has prompted ECOWAS to take action. Following the coup on July 27, which was ostensibly driven by concerns over widespread poverty, the regional body issued a seven-day ultimatum to the junta. The ultimatum demanded the reinstatement of Bazoum or warned of potential intervention. Despite the expiration of the ultimatum, ECOWAS authority of heads of state and government embarked on a diplomatic initiative to seek a peaceful resolution to the crisis. This approach was pursued amid various stakeholder calls for cautious handling to prevent escalating violence in the region. President Touré, however, contended that the situation in Niger is emblematic of a pattern of attempted coups in the region. He emphasized that ECOWAS, heads of state and government collectively deemed this coup as one too many, spurring their resolution to counteract the contagion of military takeovers. Defending the decision to potentially deploy military force to restore Bazoum's presidency, President Touré urged critics of ECOWAS' approach to delve into comprehensive research. He lamented the misrepresentation of ECOWAS' intentions in media, asserting that the organization's actions have been inaccurately construed as a declaration of war or imminent invasion. ECOWAS has neither declared war on the people of Niger nor is there a plan, as it is being purported, to invade the country. Instead, ECOWAS has activated a comprehensive set of sanctions, including the use of legitimate force to re-establish constitutional order. While diplomatic efforts persist, ECOWAS is simultaneously preparing its military forces for potential deployment. The technical arms of ECOWAS decision-making bodies have been instructed to ready the community enforcement mechanism, should circumstances necessitate military intervention. President Touré acknowledged that ECOWAS' decision to activate the clause allowing the use of force was a last resort after diplomatic dialogue proved ineffective. He highlighted the organization's deep concern for the people and the nation of Niger. He further emphasized that historical precedence suggests that military administrations often struggle to address multifaceted challenges effectively. Reiterating ECOWAS' commitment, President Touré emphasized that President Bola Ahmed Tanubu of Nigeria, the current chair of ECOWAS, authority of heads of state and government, aims to swiftly restore civilian rule in Niger through peaceful means. The organization intends to employ all available instruments to achieve this goal. Meanwhile, Niger gives US, French, German envoys 48 hours to leave. The military-appointed foreign ministry said its decision came in response to the refusal of the envoys to respond to its invitation for a meeting and other actions of their respective governments, contrary to the interests of Niger. France immediately rejected the ultimatum, stating that it did not recognize the military ruler's authority. The non-committal stance from Paris came even as hundreds of protesters held a demonstration in front of the French military base in Niamey and threatened to storm the facility if troops did not leave the West African nation within a week. People in Niger have, on several occasions, come out in force to display support for the military leaders and voice rejection of the country's former Western-backed authorities. Niger's army generals overthrew the country's pro-Western president Mohamed Bazoum on July 26. Ever since they have accused France of seeking to intervene militarily in the West African country to reinstate Bazoum. The military takeover came amid a growing wave of anti-French sentiment, with the people of Niger accusing the European country of interfering in their affairs. Niger has strategic significance as one of the world's biggest producers of uranium, where French, American and other foreign troops are deployed under the rubric of fighting militancy in the region. Earlier this month, Thousands of anti-West protesters took to the streets to protest against plans by West African nations to deploy a military force to the country. The protesters surrounded the French military base in Niger, protesting against years of military intervention by the European country in the West African nation. 
The Niger army has accused the African nation's former colonizer France of being the force behind the West African regional bloc ECOWAS, determination to restore Bazoum to office to serve the West's interests. France was a colonial power in West Africa until 1960. Since independence, the European country has maintained trade relations and a military presence in the region. This is the end of our program today. See you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.